Uh, so our next speaker's uh, speaker is Cynthia Calzolari. Uh, she graduated in uh, archaeology and anthropology uh, from the University of Rome, uh, and she collaborated with museums in different uh, regions of the world, especially in Japan and in Europe. And she will present uh, today a very uh, last uh, latest research uh, in New Caledonia. The floor is yours. Thank you. Um, I guess, okay, so um, apologies if the format of the slides is a bit confusing, but I'm from my tablet and I couldn't actually use the PowerPoint. So I hope this won't be too confusing. Um, well, with this presentation, I will introduce you to the work I've been doing over the last four months in New Caledonia, which is a French overseas territory situated in Oceania. Um, I started with a, a different project in New Caledonia in 2014, then I switched back to Japan, where I had already did some, some work, some research on cultural heritage. I was back in 2022 when basically I was back in Japan and I had a chance to travel to, to Numia. So uh, why this place and this topic? So, well, it's a nice way for me to merge together two of my main interests, which are cultural heritage, of course, and environmental issues. Um, so when considering transmission and preservation of cultural heritage, I, I, um, I generally am very, very interested in this and how particularly as recently um, there's been developing an increased concern caused by the climate change crisis, of course, but also several other problems that I, I find particularly important to start to to consider in this new perspective. So these are some of the questions that some of the questions that basically I have been developing at the beginning of my research when I had um, the call for papers and I had to hurry writing the short article that I managed to um, to get uh, featured in this Icofarm interesting publication. Um, so uh, one important thing to consider about New Caledonia is the complexity of the territory. Why? Because um, it is divided in three different regions that in French are Provence. And so here is um, a little explanation of this that I'm trying to bring you to, to try to understand um, the, the difficulties that uh, you can find when working in this area. So basically you have here, you can see different colors as it's divided. Provence North, Provence des Ile, Provence Sud. So basically we can see, we can understand this Provence concept as a region. So region in the north, the region of the islands here on the, your left, I think, or right. And the southern uh, Provence, um, so this southern region. So these regions are quite anonymous, um, autonomous in the administration and management of the, the cultural heritage as all other um, fears, um, let's say, um, things that basically you can think about. So it's, it's very, um, they are very autonomous and they are indeed responsible for the management of the cultural uh, heritage as as other um, several things but we're looking at this for now and um so um the problem that uh, arose with this was that particularly for the Provence Nord the uh, Provence des Îles uh, so north and the islands here um i couldn't get uh, an answer from a specialized person, a professional of cultural heritage, it, particularly for what concerned the uh, uh, safeguards and preservation of cultural heritage. I mean, I'm still waiting and for a, a replay, 
to my emails and this basically my last email was sent two months ago really now there have been some um some more issues that have probably add even less possibility to see an answer to my question but well um the area where I've been working the most is the southern province, uh, the region in the south. Um, and here in the map, you can see one of the most interesting uh, neighbors uh, of Numia, which is the main city in the south and also the capital. Um, this is um, um, a neighbor that is particularly um, interesting for the presence of uh, colonial houses. And this um, poster that you have on the right uh, is something that has been developed along with um, a path, a digital path that you can download on your uh, smartphone, tablet, or anything you want to <laughs> download it on. And that will provide you with some uh, nice um, routes and suggestions in order to enjoy what is the most ancient and uh, well preserved um, route. To, to actually appreciate these colonial houses. They are very, very nice, and we will look at some photos in a while. But why I'm, pu I'm putting this here? Because um, as I was mentioning, that we have already this division in regions, but again, uh, within the same regions, you have different cities, councils, so we can understand this as a council, and indeed different administrations. So it was very difficult at times to understand who was to be contacted to understand some specific uh, problems related to preservation and valorization? Because not all the what I would consider, or an historian or an archaeologist who consider a historical building, is actually has actually behind a museum or professionals. So this is very challenging for um, for doing research, but also for. Uh, tackling what are the problems now of preservation. Um, here I put some of the historical buildings and monuments that are particularly interesting and have been working on over the last years. The Centre Chibago is a, um, an immense, uh, um, an immense um, museum, let's say, but actually it involves also a park. Uh, that has been made by Renzo Piano, an Italian architect, uh, modern archi architect. And uh, this is very interesting because he's been able to enhance in this the traditional Kanak um, um, architecture. Uh, Kanak is um, basically um, a, a culture that is been developing before the colonial uh, French arrived. So it's very um, interesting to see how you can find this different architecture merging together. Very often, very interesting. And then we have, so for the Kaskanak is particularly, um, um, it's very different because the way these are preserved is, trans is passed on to new generation in a better way compared to the others. But we'll look <laughs> at this later on. Um, yeah, this is um, another point that I was trying to look at. Uh, so basically the management again, as I mentioned, you don't really have the same um, organizations or the same uh professional uh, teams behind all these historical buildings so it's very challenging at times um so one of the most complex complex um examples to look at are the uh, colonial houses because of this because they have together probably the most complex uh, uh melange uh, of different um responsibilities um, so you have, for instance, for the Maison Coloniale in the south, in Nomea, uh, Provence Sud, you have the council, you have NGOs, and you have private people that basically are the owners of the houses. And this can really be difficult for uh, trying to understand how <laughs> a program is um, actually uh, developed, who is um, um, responsible for uh, 
doing something instead of other uh, programs of valorization. So um, it's been quite interesting to see all the different uh, approaches and all the different options that uh, you can find with this preservation and valorization programs. So, so um, here you have um, um, one of the of the most ancient photos of this neighbor I was uh, mentioning before, where you have most of this Maison Coloniale. And these are some of these that are really wonderful. Um, so these are just some examples. So they are very different. You can see very different styles. And one of the problems that come with these different styles, different colors and different technique, techniques uh, is really when you have to approach the preservation issue. Because nowadays, especially in New Caledonia, we don't have artisans, craftsmen that actually are able to reproduce this. So this is um, really one of the historical buildings type that are uh, more heavily affected by time, by climate change, by um, deterioration of materials. And it's very, very challenging to restore them and also then protect these neighbors that are very, very uh, beautiful. Um, also, another problem, uh, if this was not enough, <laughs> is posed by the procedure, the demand de classement, this procedure for proposing to list an historical building that could provide some support from the Provence Sud in order to basically um, preserve and safeguard a uh, colonial house. Uh, this is a very complex uh, procedure. And it's very difficult for some um, privates to uh, access the expertise uh, that they need in order to do the classement, in order to, do the, the, to ask for having this list. So um, many, many colonial houses are left behind, unfortunately. If you think I was talking with an um, uh, NGO recently, a charity that is working uh, really a lot on, on these issues, and they told me, they explained me that basically in the same neighbor, there could, there could be more than around 60 colonial houses that have been tragically neglected uh, and left behind, while only, well, scarcely six, seven have managed to have the funds needed in order to have um, restoration and what they need to be preserved. So I was able in this um, short research time identify some of the main concern and problems that affect these buildings, the historical buildings, uh, always considering the climate change, the extreme weather related damages and the sustain sustainability challenges that were some of the, my topics of research. One of the most common problems all around uh, the islands was the termites. Uh, how basically these are really destroying even the buildings that you won't expect to, like we will look later very quickly to the cath uh, cathedral. And even the cathedral had to be, um, go, had to go under some restoration uh, procedure because of termites. Uh, the decay of natural materials, of course, because all of these historical buildings are made of, primarily made of, uh, wood, which is clearly very easily affected uh, by rains uh, that are massive in this region because it's a tropical area, and also heavy uh, um, winds with cyclones, and um, but there, the wind is very, very strong all year round, so it's very easy to get some branches broken and clash again against <laughs> Uh, some is, um, architectural elements. Uh, but another uh, interesting element that I was able to find uh, uh, relates to the uh, sorry, availability of natural resources um, for elements that need to be restored. Uh, 
Why? Uh, because of uh, not only because of uh, climate change, but also because um, there have been some massive um, drillings, let's say, because of the nickel um, um, extraction, extraction. And uh, so these are reduced enormous, enormously, the, um, uh, some of the areas that were um, used to go and find uh, natural resources that were needed for the Kaskanak, particularly. And uh, so this is something that I had been um, uh, receiving as a feedback from uh, Kanak uh, clans already in 2014. And this was confirmed again when I was able to talk with some of them, particularly in Umiya this last time. Uh, so the availability of natural resources is something common between the colonial houses as with the Kas Kanak. Uh, same with the um, heavy rains, while the termites and the decay of natural materials affect far less the Kaskanak because uh, these are remade completely. Um, every, um, now this can change from clump to clump, but every uh, number of years, uh, these are completely remade. And some of the sustainability challenges that I was particularly interested about uh, uh, concerned uh, the way um, you uh, you really can not find expertise on the territory, particularly for uh, what concerned the uh, preservation of these historical buildings. Not for the Kaskanak, because the Kanak have really a very preserved, very well preserved way to to teach to new generations about these building techniques, but for the colonial houses instead, and also for the for the hearthstones that are needed for buildings like the cathedral. So these uh, European these techniques that come from Europe are those that have been particularly more affected by the, the loss of a uh, new generation that can be trained or uh, could be, um, uh, let's say, uh, well, very important for, um, for preserving um, these techniques. So these are some photos that I wanted to share with you that I took this last time. Um, these are the Kaskanak, just to give you an idea of the structures. And on the back, you can see the um, um, Chibao Cultural Center. Uh, this is the Cathedral of Nemia. So you can see there is a mix of wood here with the thermite um, um, images and the hearthstone structure here on the left. Um, and here is one of the uh, of the most famous colonial houses that you can find that has been uh, restored and with a lot, with a, a very big effort because uh, there have been some uh, artisans that arrived from France in order to reproduce some of the wooden parts, particularly others have been lost. So it's been of uh, this problem or um, this, are details of the parts that have been um, basically uh, reused in different ways because there wasn't a way to reproduce these specific uh, motifs. And these are other other elements, other um, interesting things that you can actually enjoy when visiting this um, the historical building, so it's also about artisan of another kind. So here I, I can conclude um, uh, with this uh, conclusion, <laughs> indeed, um, that basically Europe uh, considered the importance of preservation and valorization of historical buildings and uh, underlines the importance of identifying gaps related to cultural heritage safeguarding practices that can be very different. Uh, that is important to share best practices in, modern, in order to encourage implementation through expert experience on territories. And that is important to improve heritage resilience to climate change, particularly in this moment. 
uh, so we really need to shift towards uh, new, new forms of, of development so that could actually boost also uh, greener tourism and a greener economy that we really all need, especially in this historical moment. So this is uh, my presentation. I look forward to your questions later on. Thank you.